Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome back to another video tutorial about Asana. So this is our second part in our little mini series here about using Asana for your virtual assistant. If you haven't seen uh, the previous first episode, go ahead and check that out. There should be a link in the description here to see that. If you're just jumping ahead, that's okay too. This is all gonna be uh, valuable stuff. So we're carrying on with uh, Asana here and we're gonna do at least one more video tutorial where we're using the free version of Asana to get our business set up and ready to start utilizing a virtual assistant. So a key aspect of utilizing a virtual assistant or a VA is having a single source of truth for what your VA is going to be working on. So some kind of task management system. And in my opinion, Asana is kind of like the most lightweight yet pretty powerful, especially as we get into some of the paid features, but uh, really lightweight. And a lot of the BAs that you're gonna find are already trained on using Asana. They've already used it, so it's a familiar platform for them, okay? So carrying on with uh, the Asana theme here, we're gonna get into projects, okay? And projects serve kind of an intuitive purpose, which we'll go over, but also a little bit of a hidden purpose, which I have found to be a huge benefit to my business when it comes to establishing standard processes. A little bit more on that later, but let's talk about projects. So quick refresher. I just got a, like a two person team here. I got Nick, who's myself, and I got service at IncomeDigs.com. We're going to pretend that that is a real human being. This would be my virtual assistant. So this would be like VA at IncomeDigs.com or whatever the case is. So we have some tasks assigned and we have some tagging going on here, which is really useful. I want you to be using recurring tasks. So something like an Instagram post, something that recurs in this case, every Wednesday, all right? Another thing is filing receipts. We can, we can recur every single weekday, so definitely use the recurring feature, okay? Let's talk about projects. So within my team here, I can create a project, even if I am in the free version of um, Asana, I can create a project. Now I can click use a template, okay? And I don't have any templates because it's a paid feature. So I will show you that in future videos. But let's just assume right now we're, we're keeping costs low, we're just going in with the free version of Asana. And so I'm gonna create a project from scratch. I can't use templates, at least not yet, all right? So I'm gonna create a project from scratch and it's asking me, what's my default view? Do I want list? Timeline I won't be able to do because I don't have a paid feature yet, board or calendar. I'm gonna go with list. I'm gonna make it public for the team and I'm gonna call this renovation of some sort. So projects, the intuitive use of the project is, let's say I have this one thing that I'm going to do with a start date and with a finish date. That to me is the, the definitive use of a project. So not every task is necessarily going to go to a project. It would just be those tasks that have a start and finish date. So let's call this one, two, three. Uh, that's a boring address. Let's do 65 Central Park flip. Okay. A lot of you out there are flippers. Uh, flipping properties. You don't have to be for this to be relevant, but let's just do that for now. Uh, what do you want to do first? Start adding tasks, share with teammates, set up a workflow. That is a premium feature. I am going to start adding tasks. Okay, so what that project does then is it starts to show up here in this list. And so you can see we can have multiple projects potentially. Okay, so I'm going to start adding tasks to this. And so what could be some tasks that happen on a renovation project? One could be finalize architectural plans, okay? And I'm just gonna start adding a bunch and then we're gonna start adding tags and all that kind of stuff. Finalize architectural plans, okay, that's good. We need that to happen. We need to file for a permit, align subcontractors, okay, if we're using subs, oops. Right, um, what else do we need to do? We need to buy some stuff, so we need to purchase uh, like what happens first? If we're thinking about lead times, right? We might need to purchase windows happens first. Um, maybe cabinets would happen second. Um, and then maybe it's like fixtures. And of course I understand, I understand all too well that our projects are way more complicated than I'm gonna demonstrate here, but I just wanna get some stuff on paper here. So architectural plans, we got the permit, align the subs, purchase cabinets, purchase fixtures. Um, what can we do? What else could we maybe do an asbestos survey? Not sure if you guys have to deal with that, but that's something we have to do here in the city of Buffalo. Okay, so there's a list of stuff, okay? Now notice I have the ability to add what's called a section here. And this is useful within a project because we can start to almost phase out our projects, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm gonna do a section for prep and preliminaries, okay? 
Uh, I'm going to do another section for procurement. And then I'm going to do another section for um, the actual renovation. Okay. And now what we can do with this is I can select, for example, this architectural plans, I can bring it down into prep and preliminaries. Okay. I can do the same for file for permit, align subcontractors. I can do that same thing. Here's all my purchasing. Now, can I do multiple? Now I just clicked on this one and I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to select that. And I've got all three so I can update them all. Okay meaning I could set due dates, or I can click and drag all three of them into the procurement section, okay? And I can bring my asbestos survey down here as well, okay? So you can see I'm starting to organize my project a little bit. Now, what's the actual renovation gonna be like? Well, we're gonna have demo, we're going to have framing, we are going to have, I typically go rough HVAC, then we go rough plumbing, rough electric, insulation. What else might we have? Um, you know, in, in this is we might have a um, framing inspection, we might have an insulation inspection. Now notice I have no due dates yet, right? I'm just kind of laying out what might happen framing inspection, insulation inspection, uh, plumbing inspection, electrical inspection all that stuff. And then we might need to um, do the drywall. Now, before we do the drywall, we might need to measure and order drywall, something like that, right? Okay, so I'm just kind of adding all the stuff that needs to happen in this project. And what you're going to see in the future videos is what the work I'm doing right now is kind of a lot of work. And you know, as well as I do, that a lot of these projects follow the same kind of path. So what we're able to do is in the future, templatize this. And that's the huge beauty of something like Asana in the paid version is we can take the work we've already done and start our new project with a lot of that already done for us. So we're certainly going to want to assign these tasks, okay, to, to people within our team, okay? Now, some of these are probably going to be performed by somebody outside of our team, but it's still, we're not gonna necessarily have every single subcontractor into our system here, right? So we need to have the list of items and then somebody from our team is accountable for then getting that subcontractor to do the thing, right? So and we can start setting dates. Now, what we can't do yet, because we, we're not on the paid version, is we can't set dependencies. And that is super, super powerful. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to say that measure and order drywall is kind of dependent or it's a predecessor to doing the drywall. Uh, similar to that is like the insulation inspection is a dependent of insulation. Okay. And that's something we'll be able to do with, um, with our start, uh, with our dependencies. Now with these inspections, this to me is an opportunity for us to use tags. So we have sections, which think of those as like bigger phases, right? We're not going to change the sections too often, but I do like the ability to potentially use tags to help us filter down our list into those things that are of a certain type. Okay. So I'm going to add a new tag here. And now to do this, I'm going to actually on my keyboard, I'm going to type use tab T and it's going to bring up the tags here. Okay. So I'm going to do tags. I'm going to do inspection as a tag. Okay. I want to add that tag for inspection. I want to make that black. Okay. So this is an inspection here and therefore I can tag it like this and now I can filter this down. I'm going to show you that in a second. Okay. So I have inspection or I have tag there. Okay, good. So I'm going to do this one. Actually, before I do, why don't I do a bulk edit? Okay, so bulk edit, I'm going to grab plumbing inspection and electrical inspection. Can I, I can't add a task for multiple bummer. Okay, so too bad. Um, but could I potentially, nope, I can't even out of my columns here. So I'm not getting everything that I want. Oh, there's tags right there. Okay. Yep. There's tags. Okay. So I can quickly add the inspection tag here. It's tough. Asana does a really good job of making you want the premium features. Okay. 
So I have all that stuff and I'm, and I'm kind of establishing this project and that is great. So that 65 Central Park flip, I can kind of manage the project in here. Okay, and this is a project, really kind of a traditional project where we're gonna go through a renovation. That makes a lot of sense, hopefully, right? Now here is where I wanna get you to start unlocking a really cool uh, side feature of projects. And that is establishing standard operating procedures or SOPs. And when we think about templatizing our business, what I want you to do is use projects as a way to start compartmentalizing various process flows within your business. Let me give you an example, and that would be a um, that would be I want to do a new project. I'm going to do a um, a new renter onboarding. Okay, so just like a lot of my audience flips houses, a lot of us also have rental properties. So tenant onboarding. Okay, so now, is this really a project? Well, it is. Let's say that I have Jane Smith who needs to move into my apartment. That has a start and end date to get this person moved in. And so what might some of these tasks look like? Well, you might have something like execute lease. Okay, um, we might have something communicate um, utility transfer, exchange keys, send new tenant welcome packet. Okay. Uh, set tenant up in tenant cloud. Maybe I'm using some kind of online software or maybe it's uh, buildium, whatever, right? So we have all these things that we need to do. And in similar, we can kind of use sections to understand like pre move, post move, maybe. I don't know, um, you know, it's up to you how, how you set this up, but I want you to think about how that process currently works. Outline those tasks. Think about which of these tasks are going to be something you do and which of these tasks are gonna be something that your assistant helps you with, okay? Indicate due dates, move them into your sections, establish tags, and what I want you to do with this and other processes within your business is solidify kind of a template. And then what we're going to do in the future videos as we get into Asana Premium is we're going to learn, or the paid version, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, we're gonna upgrade. We can use this template as we get new tenants or as we get new projects, right? We don't have to do this work over and over again. And it does two things. One, has the obvious impact of helping us save time, right? We don't have to set this project up every single time we're gonna have a new way of doing things. But second, and I think more importantly, is it helps to mimic standard operating procedures for our business. This is the process, this is how we do things, and so we're documenting it here. As opposed to us going and drawing out a process flow, which I think has value and has use, this is a quicker way to get up and running with a standard operating procedure. We can templatize and the template that we have for tenant onboarding will exist for us as a living, breathing standard operating procedure that we can edit, we can test and see how it works, and we can use to save us time, all right? So start playing around with projects within Asana. Again, everything I've done so far is stuff that we can do with Asana, just the free version, okay? Now, we're gonna see how if we unlock a few features in the future videos, we can really do a ton more linking dependencies, using the templates I was talking about, seeing the timeline view, which means start dates are gonna be included. A lot gets unlocked in the next level up. And that's probably where I'm gonna cap it. I'm not gonna go too far into like paying a ton of money for this. I wanna unlock some of the features for you and I want this to be practical for you. So on those follow-up videos that we're gonna have, uh, we'll certainly talk about upgrading and, and the, the power we can unleash there. But um, in the meantime, check all this stuff out. Make sure you're using projects, you understand tags, questions that you have on this stuff, throw them in the comments right here on YouTube and I will answer them directly. And be sure to look out for the next video in this series. If you are interested at all in our course coming out, Super VA, definitely sign up. There's a link in the description here to get on the wait list for that. That course is coming out at the end of Q1 2023. So if you're interested in that, we'd love to make sure you are the first to get it and also to get uh, all those discounts that we have out when the course first launches. So until next time, check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. I will see you on the next video.